All right, guys, what we got here is another MPL weekly catch up. We're going to start off by showing the team. I'm going to say what threat I see. I'm going to be better about it this week. Then I'm going to play the game at normal speed and we're just going to watch what happens. I'm going to say anything I do or don't like and I'll show standings at the end. So let's get another game going. Uh, right off the bat, Mando's team, same thing. I can't say I see one mod and think, oh, this wins the game, but it's six annoying dudes. Iceman's team, Mega Diancy, Zygarde setting up, Grand if it's Battle Bond. Those are probably the big three threats. The other three are kind of, I don't know, we'll see what they're here for or what they do. The music was on. Apologies. <laughs> I'm not editing it out, so Just protect your ears. You know, it'll happen. Uh, so rocks are up. We're Life Orb on Starmie, which is a perfectly fine set. That guy hurts, especially if it goes second. I'm guessing if it's Life Orb, it must be analytic, I would assume. Um, Sylveon comes in for free here. We go the Poison Mon. That's simple. Baton Pass, because obviously this guy wants to Poison move, he's going to maybe eat a P-Jab. No, just a knockoff. It makes sense. No boots are gone. Hurricane hit and confused. Oh, and then he hits himself in confusion. That's unfortunate. That Mon's basically a sack now. He raw hits Focus Blast on the Empoleon coming in. That's very real. Um, this Mando guy looks like he actually prepped this week instead of just playing. Um, we power Gem Dagron. And then we earth powered like it was going to kill. There goes our Mega Diancy. Um, no, not that was right there. I'm just going to stop it real quick. I think Mega Diancy could have done more in this game if you chipped stuff more. I don't know if I agree with earth powering the Mega Agron for 40 and letting it die, but everyone's got different. Uh, Different prios. Uh, Iceman clicked low click, probably assuming he's going to go Mega Agron, but um, it was a bold stay in on what could have been Gunk Shot, but I guess Mando really just didn't care. It was just going to say, if you've got Gunk, let's see it, brother. Um, yeah, so we can go Cinderace. Uh, this is probably Scarf Eruption. No, well, maybe not even Scarf, because unless this is Scarf Cinderace, which it might be. I can't really see a world where this isn't Scarf Eruption, so it's probably Scarf Cinderace. Here comes Zygarde. Uh, they saw a Terra Preview, so he knew this was water, so he's going to, yeah, he clicked Thunderbolt, which it's it's a 50-50. He either attacks on the Terra or doesn't, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, Mando got the 50-50 right, so... Zygarde gets put in a bad spot. He does scout Stone Edge, or if he's not scouting, he found out. You know what I'm saying? Here comes Torterra. Terra's into grass. Eats that outrage and bullet seeds. Threat handled. Um, Gren comes in. He goes Mega Agron. This will die to surf either way. Um, Battle Bond is proc, so this mon definitely is a threat. Could still win. Here comes Sylveon. So unless we have Gunk, we are walled. He clicked Ice Beam. Obviously, we didn't have Gunk. And then the 9 HP Okie Doge comes in. Even if this thing kills with Poison Jab, which it does. Um, Thunderous comes in its Scarf, and he just clicks it on Missable Move. And that is Week 1. Oh, sorry. Game 1, not Week 1. Uh, right on to Game 2. Looks like I've mixed up the order. So we've got Goo Man, aka Marcus, and Dishonored playing Game 2 right off the bat. Threats on Marcus's team. Ogre Pond, you always got to watch out for. Keldeo is a threat. Alakazam's quick. T-Tar, this is Mega T-Tar, so it's just kind of fat, but it's still annoying. Honestly, it's kind of same thing. These Any of these mods could win, win the game. Leo's team, we are we are Gliscor and Terrain Halucha. We know what our win cons are here. Uh, again, like I said, they do get Terra Preview, so there's going to be a 50-50 at one point in the game, I'm assuming. And then the result will probably, you know, get affected by that. Moonblast on the Gudra, that's fine. Grassy Terrain is up, so you know we're just kind of healing. That's did a lot to this Ogre Pond, honestly. He sits up. Dang. It's 17%. Titar is just so strong, man. And it's in Grassy Terrain, so it's just like... Flash Cannon was good. 
you don't want to click EQ or, or Earth Power if you have it in the grassy terrain, but he got chipped with his... He took the AB off, so it's not as free. Here comes Ogre Pond, this Ferrothorn. Clicked ID. Well, there goes the Encore, so... You know. Oh, I remember this game now. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and say... Uh, this game wasn't over. You can just swap and try to do anything when there's only one SD on the half HP Ogre Pond. But the decision to just ID and stay in is, uh, I don't know. We're just, you know, deciding that we want the game to end. Like, I don't, I don't really know what this play was. Um, Marcus is using the only Ogre Pond that can wear an item because it's the base one. Um, so he's protective pads. So even this, I'll just stay in and let it die to iron barbs ideas. Like once you get hit, once you see that that's not what's going to happen. So we should have gotten out of here. Um, now this fair thorn is, is too low already. You know what I'm saying? He goes blacky, which is fine, but this ogre pond is times forward. So, I mean, Leo only has one chance at this point. Grassy Glide does 13, and Marcus clicks Ivy Cudgel, but he's, you know, plus 6. So we're going to go Halucha, because obviously it'll force out the Ogre Pawn to click Acrobatics. It's a smart play to not let the Halucha get the SD on, so I understand Marcus staying in, but um, he goes Sandy Shocks, who I don't think Halucha can kill without an SD, and now Unburden's gone, so Halucha's not a, Halucha's not a threat now. Um, Glitzker comes in, but there's Reflect, um, so that didn't really do anything. This Ferrothorn took 25, and then dies to Scald. This Halucha comes in, this Acrobatics might do a decent amount, but we are hitting Power Electric Keldeo, this thing cleans again. Um, at this point, it's just over, like, Keldeo clicks, Keldeo clicks, and everything dies. Sacred Sword, Sacred Sword, Sacred Sword, Sacred Sword. And then Scald or whatever you want to click during this Gliss Core. Yep, and that's it, bro. Reflect and Keldeo won. I guess we got handled. All right, we've got Day and Ryan here. Oh, let me repause this. So obviously on Ryan's team, uh, this is Scizor and Ursaluna are always threats and annoying. And Serilege, this thing's the only way people run it is in Dirt or Weak Armor. Weakness policy. And then Machamp's kind of cool with Guts, but I don't think it's really like a game ender. And then uh, Day's team, Enam, King Gambit, and Regieleki. Uh Any of those can be win con, and Mega Venu can just be annoying. Um, easy U-turn on the King Gambit for the for the proc. He doesn't want to eat that, so the Intimidate's good. Close combat still is 45 Intimidated, bro. This guy, this Tauros guy. This is a good double to the slow bro. Poltergeist, raw. 70%, man. This shit does holy. It's weakness policy, slow bro, and he clicks iron defense. Sadly. Oh, he can't click poltergeist again because he consumed the item. Okay, so that was actually kind of a cool tech. Unfortunately, Ryan brings this out to every week, and it's always Magic Bounce, U-Turn, Haze, Insert, two other moves. So, I don't know, going for setup against this Ryan Zatu is just being unaware of who we're playing, I guess. Um, Skull Burn's fine, but with CM, it doesn't wall the Ceaseless Edge, so we go King Gambit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These plays are checking out. This singular spike is up. Now there's two spikes up. Holy. Go to Zatu. On Giga Drain. Um, smart of Day to at least get a little HP back and not click uh, Leech Seed if he even has it. And it gets psychic for 30, so never mind. We are Poison Fishing. We didn't get it. King Gambit comes in. He takes double spikes. This King Gambit's taking chip just from, just from the spikes, which is a little scary. We SD'd on King Gambit. Uh, and we tried to read something else coming in. That's unfortunate because you know this is going to click Haze and it's faster than King Gambit. So yeah, this hit Zatuman was a big problem. I don't know why we didn't try to play around getting Regilecki in on it. Um, 
Like, sure, he can go, he can go versus Luna, but, like, I don't know, you double on the bear. If we're going to double around everything else, why not double around the Zatu? Um, there goes King Gambit and Artera, so looking not in a great spot. We missed Ceaseless Edge. It probably would have done a good chunk, but this guy clicked Iron Defense, so now he's in a better spot. That first one probably it might have been a roll to kill, honestly, if he hit it. <laughs> Um, now this guy's in, but the bear's special, so it doesn't matter. Uh, we sacked our enamorous, so if it was or had a chance to win, no longer does. We kept this slow bro around. The slow bro set up and Zatu's dead, so I guess I can kind of see it. But yeah, he's just gonna do this. He's just gonna. He's just gonna hit you. Times two defense, slow bro with my champ and normal normal facade forty six through times two defense. Machamp is so strong. I like the bring of the Terra normal Machamp though. That was cool. Intimidate on Toros Blaze. Clicks Raging Bull on Sterile Edge. And that procs his weak armor. Now he endures on the Earthquake. And uh, that's going to do what everybody knew the set was. And yeah. They typed it right here. You can't really see it on screen. GG. That was, you know, that's game, guys. There is not much else to be done here. Uh, he's got three times speed, so he's faster than even Lecky. So it doesn't matter. He can just bitter blade. And, uh, yeah, that's the end of this game. We got a little handled, I guess. Close that out. Next, we're going to watch Roy, a.k.a. Megan D. Stallion versus Wumbles. Um, so this is a... Pretty decent lead. The the Mega Absol on the Jirachi was actually a good call, and then knock off on the on the Lando is free, and he and so pretty much just off. Oh, out of here, sorry, I've messed up. Obviously, Lando could have been a win con, but is no longer. He was intimidate with lefties. Well, he's always intimidate, but who knows what his actual win con was? But Rory Moon can win a game. Jirachi can win a game. This Slitherwing is kind of a breaker, and then Mega Bennett's just annoying with D Bond for Wumbles. Iron Moth, Coco, Ogre Pond are all super big threats. Mega Absol is fast and can hurt, but I don't know. I don't I'm not counting it as a win con. But just off that good lead, he got Roy to give him the Landorus. So you love to see it. Um this Slitherwing is getting quick. And then he Terra fires on the Terra Water and clicks Leech Life and it kills. So Wumbles, Terra gone. Roy Terra also shown. Um, that's a good earthquake on Drach coming in. Sadly, it won't two hit. So he could T wave or do something annoying. U turn is also free. And that, uh, yeah, there goes Mega Absol, which is fine. Mega Absol got rid of this Lando, which is worth, honestly. Uh, Skarm's in. Spike up. Wumbles, Ninetales in. Flamethrower on the Quagsire. Well, Swampert named Quagsire. This guy thinks he's really, really quirky. Uh, that Solar Beam did 67, and then it didn't die to Earthquake. So I don't know if, if that was a roll to kill the Ninetales or not, but uh, yeah, there goes our Swampert. But obviously this Ninetales can't come back in, so that's good. Um, I don't know if I agree with it. Whoa, that's actually wild. I forgot this play happened. That play right there, the sub on the Memento was... A very good play. At least now our Ogre Pond is behind a sub. Um, we just play annoying Mega Bennett games here. Yeah, this thing's clicking Destiny Bond. He clicks Leech Seed. It's actually really good. So he prepped for this Mega Bennett to be the thing that he couldn't defeat. Um, Coco in the back with Skarm in the back. I'd say, if, depending, well, this is his set. Focus Energy, Leech Seed, Ivy Cudgel, and Sub. So I think we... I think we're pretty much playing for Coco win. Um... Yeah, this, uh, no, he got another sub off, so, oh, he's not going to die. He needs to get one more sub off. Like, he needs to not, not, if he can get one more, like, sub here, because he lived on the leech seed. No, nope, never mind. Um, so that's annoying. He lost 62 HP there. Um, if he was behind a sub, he was in a way better spot. Because it th this will break the sub and he Ivy Cudgels and then it dies. And then he's got to go one more Mondasac, one more. Uh, we went Coco. I think 
this was a misplay just based on uh I know how the game ends. Um He needed Coco to actually win. We're not going to watch all these turns because what happens here is nothing. These two mons that are left can't break this Skarm, like for the most part. So we just we just watch a lot of stall happen for like 40 more turns. The Skarm's walled because it's Spike Roost, Body Press, and Toxic. And um, this Jirachi's walled just because it's only Doom Desire, so they play a game of Paras and Doom Desire and Wishes and randomly swapping to the Roaring Moon to try and avoid uh, Chip. But without any way to get rid of the leftovers, this Strachi just wins off PP. And that's it, really. Um, I'm going to go to Hyper Fast, get this over with. So he used... Sorry, uh, there's, a, there's a turn that mattered there. 33, turn 33 over here. Um, he went to the Roaring Moon and clicked Knock and took off the Rocky Helmet, which was the only other way that Skarm could have won. Now, without any way to chip the Jirachi off you on U-turns, this guy can just... Yeah, as you can see, we just watched a lot of PP stall, so... Um, yeah, Wumbles doesn't win this. There's not really a way for him to. Like, he might get... He might pick up a KD if he can read an ID on the... Roaring Moon, but he doesn't have enough PP to go through Jirachi. Jirachi has U turn and T Wave, which is almost more than Roost, Body Press, Toxic, and Spikes. And then he also still has Wish and then an extra 8 on Doom Desire. So, and then he's still got a couple moves on Roaring Moon in turns that Wumbles does get paired. Wumbles would need to get paired a lot more to avoid uh, using PP to not lose to this Jirachi. And just at the end, he needed to, like, I don't know. He paired like 14 times in a row or something like that to beat the Jirachi, like saving Roost also. Um, all right, so our next game is Riot versus Kyle. Off the immediate rip, Arcanine is a big threat mon. This duck can always win. You have to watch out for sub glare Serp. And on Riot's team, Ogre Pond can be an issue. Setup Manaphy, whether it's Tail Glow or Take Heart, is always an issue. Heracross is strong if it's Guts. It could also sweep with Moxie. And just because Mimikyu is Mimikyu, it's going to get probably a free SD off. So let's see what we got. Decent lead. We go Zapdos on the Crobat. We're fishing for Static Para. As a man of similar taste, I would do the same thing. Free Volt Switch on the Gudra, but it's not going to do close to nothing. Rabambi's finally out. Love to see it. Um, Crobat comes in, Rabombi clicks Quiver Dance, alright, I just don't know, like, I think we have to have an intervention, bro, because I just feel like, like, it, 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 just because the Mon's in and you can click the move, if you look at this team, like, unironically, and, you, and you're like, okay, if I click Quiver Dance, who's coming in, and you see the answer is always Crobat, if you don't kill that Crobat with whatever move that you boost, just click the webs, my guy. Just put them up. Like, just, like, setup is not always the answer if you can't kill what comes in after you click the setup. Like, you gotta look one play ahead. You, you gotta start doing it. Um, good T-Wave on Goldingo. Knockoff. Bring, takes out the magnet on Zapdos, so electric moves are no longer boosted. Scald, uh, you know, Scald and Burn instantly. Classic. That's a, that's a, just a Pokemon staple honestly acid armor so now the gudra's getting big all right so now we go rabambi on scald it only does like 36 and no burn but at least you'll probably force this guy out because you can click moonblast there's the webs let's go all right now our canines in we got brave birded that's okay i don't know what set we are on the rk9 i have less intel than i did this week okay head smash is fine are we rockhead finally We were, it was Rocky Helmet, okay. Okay, I had to look for a second. Rocky Helmet, so we're Rockhead. So, good bring on that part. Uh, Zapdos here, clicks Roost. Uh, Goldengo comes in on the Para, which is fine, but... Um, he took its leftovers and then got them knocked off, and now he's got a Gudra that's... Scarfed into Knock. But also parried, but this is it like uh, this does ten percent. I don't know if this is 
He's having real issues with this Gudra, pretty much. And I don't think he can go Rabambi. It'll probably kill at this point. So there's a little bit of stalling going on. Then we finally decided to sack the Goldango because we realized that we don't want to lose all of our roosts on Zapdos to the Gudra that's locked into Nock. Um, this is a similar problem that I think he had with his... Um, it's a similar problem from the same, like... Um, with Rabambi, like he burns Terra here, that's fine. He's at plus one speed. He gets a kill, right? This guy's gonna go Manaphy. If you can't kill this Manaphy right here, you need to save the duck because the duck can still win the game, and the Manaphy's slow. Like and every every player, if you just think for a second, Manaphy's coming in, it clicks Tail Glow. Or it's clicking the new take heart move. It's one or the other. But instead we chip it and it, and riot attacks, which is fine. Um I guess it could have been hard to go hard into Manaphy, I guess, because he's got two counters that he wants to kind of come in clean, but I don't know. I just feel like if this Manaphy's standing in front of me, he's getting big, and I don't want that. Uh we we glared on the Gudra, but we gotta get out of there. Good, it got parried, so safe. Our canine comes in on the Crobat. This is a good read. Webs are off, but it's okay because we head smash, so we get our kill. Good. Good, 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 good. Uh, this guy clicks take heart, and we miss head smash. That's sad. I don't know how much that roll is. Um, if that killed, that could be an issue. I'm not going to stop and calc right now because I'm trying to get through this quicker than I am getting through this recording. Um, but it doesn't really matter now. This man, if he's getting big, um, Zapdos can't do much because it's got Ice Beam. And Serp can come in, or a bomb can come in, but it's times two, it's Bidef. I think we've accepted L at this point. Um, I don't, obviously... Rabambi couldn't really win anyway. He would have needed to he would have needed to do what he's doing right now, go on this. Glared got like taken care of it or dropped it low enough to have Rabambi come in, but then Rabambi's standing in front of like Heracross and doesn't kill it, I don't think. Or at least not before. Like, he needs to quiver dance on Rabambi if you were to try and play for a win con at the end with these. And we're and we're walling the Serp with Gudra. Um yeah, so Unfortunate game got handled a little bit. Um, Riot prepped well. I don't know if this is just not Kyle's like vibe as a team or what, but it's it's looking a little tough. Uh, now we've got Sky and Psycho threats immediately. D Knight, D Knight, and Blaziken. Obviously, one of them probably is going to win. Mega Guard's good to do chip, and then Nine Tails and Ting Lu are annoying. Sky's team. Uh, she deserves death for still using Zorark. Megastar Y can win. And Nihilego, if he gets running, can win. Um, these other guys are like annoying, but I don't necessarily know if I'd see them as win cons. The Zorark could do a lot if it's Terra goes poltergeist again, as it is, as it is every week. Uh, so we started off the rip, and this is obviously Zorark, because this Mian Shadow did not come out and click Shadow Ball. Hyper Voice did 68, so we're throwing our Mega Guard away, but we clicked U-Turn. All right. So, this was unfortunate because you Terra Steel to not die, but then instead of getting your Guard kill, you U-Turned out and went Cleavor, who's still faster than Gardevoir in Trick Room, and still died to Hyper Voice. So it's like, not only did we lose Terra, and 68% on Zorark, but we lost Cleavor. I think to minimize losses there, you just, you either take your kill and lose your 68 HP on Zorark, but only lose like your Terra, because, you know, this could come back in at 32%, and then you still have a Cleavor. Or after you get hit, you just go hard Cleavor and save Terra and 32% on Zorark so that you maybe you can do it on something else. But the double, the double commit to losing a Mon was hard. Uh, Psyshock does 73. This Mega Guard has punched a hole in this team. So in four turns, this Mega Guard has taken 150 damage from Zorark, Charizard, and 
then another hundred from Cleavor and killed it. So that guard punched a big asshole in your in your team. Uh, here comes this guy, but it doesn't matter. He just clicks Flare Blitz on Blaziken. Trick Room ends, which is fine because he gets the speed boost. So now you want to be fast again. Uh, we double out on the Nihilego. This thing probably just doesn't touch Tinglu. Yep. <laughs> um, we go Charizard Mega Y on Rock Slide, but like no diff, I'm pretty sure. Even though you hit it harder than Nihilego, you could have just taken your kill there too. Um, well, now our D-Knight's toxic and we got crit just so we could hit Rock Tomb. I think I think Ting Lu was... Eh, he didn't really need D-Knight at that point, so like, no diff. But Hoopa comes in on the real Mian Xiao now, and now we go Ting Looser. Um, got his lefties knocked, but no diff really. Turns it into a fairy and clicks Earthquake, crits the Cyclozar back. This thing clicks Iron Head, but that did 21, so Cyclozar is gone. And then we're going to go ahead and get Sludge Bombed on the Nihiligo. Um, but that's alright as long as we live. Earthquake kills, and then this Mian Xiao comes in, but there's not really any diff. Like, yeah, return, we'll secure her one more kill, but then we just go Nine Tails. Um, we click Blizzard. This guy clicks Return. And then we click Blizzard again. That's the game. Wrap it up, GG. One more, one more. We got Blitz It and Mort here. Uh, we got Lead Torkoal on the Sun Abuser into Megalop Lead, which is fine. Probably just... Oh, he just went for it. He just led it, and he just clicked Return. Said, I'll take my 33%, my brother. U turns out of there. Uh, Walking Wake comes in. Oh, sorry. He clicked U-Turn, and it was Eject Button. So Walking Wake is in, boosting speed in the sun. Uh, knock off on the Slow King. It's really smart. Uh, and then Dragon Pulse does 24, so... Probably not great. Now we are T-waved, so I you know honestly I can't say I'm surprised. Um now the tusk is in, this thing is attack. We put Claude in front of it. I, I feel like I can kill Claude, truly, right? Like But neither of them attack, they both double. Baton pass into Darm. And uh, future sights in the air. Darm clicks flare blitz into the volcano. It does 30 in sun. But it doesn't really matter because there's a um, hey, Defog on Volcanion. I wish I could click that. Future Sight lands, hit this guy for 40, and then we can just do that. Fuck it. Threat handled. Um, I don't know if I... I this thing was already T-waved, so I don't necessarily know if I say we have to tear a fairy there, but it is annoying, obviously. You know what I mean? But it is T-Wave, so he's only going back to normal speed. But we are kind of slow, so maybe it was still worth, just in case he doesn't actually get paired. Megalop comes in, fake out, yip. Simple. Um, oh, I didn't do threats. Well, I mean, we can see him. Sun Abuser, Venusaur, Great Tusk, and Walking Wake, and then Bax. And Megalopunny pretty much need to win the game for him. There's not a lot here going on. The Teacup, I guess. Sure. Uh, Baton Pass. Now the Darm's in front of the Garask. Hup. We go Slow King on U-Turn. That did a fuck ton. Slowly chipping this uh this guy down. Future Sight hits his hat pretty hard. We slack off on Slow King. Get HP back on the momentum. Venusaur comes back in. Baby a triple. Now we play a little bit of Weather Wars. Uh, Torkoal's T-waved to put up rocks. And then he chilies out. So Sun's off, which is smart. We go hard back Scalibur on probably rocks going back up. And now the games begin. Uh, he clicked Glaive Rush. I feel like Hat's always coming in. Maybe we click not the Dragon move, but I understand maybe he sacks or he goes Torkoal to put the Sun back up. Um, but I think it was already Torkoal, was it not? Yeah, so I don't know. Kind of obvious Hat's coming in. Uh, this, this Teacup clicked CM and then um, ID before that. That did 41. This Cup is drinking wait a second who's who's letting this cup cook strength sap yeah that's gonna bring it back to full man this guy's one of those mons that's doing 30 man 
And it's good that he like took all those turns to do that shit because it's just wasting sun turns. But at this point, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I th Blitz probably at at t times two defense. He probably he probably needed to Terra. And if not, honestly, at this point, it's pretty much a Terra a Terra angle on on Darm. Um, Slow King comes in. This thing's just gonna get earthquake for sixty. And throw up another future site. We are running out of future site swaps. Cloud Sire comes in on the earthquake and got decimated. <laughs> yeah, this is what I was saying before. Um, I felt like Tusk could have just clicked earthquake when he was standing in front of Cloud. It didn't kill, but the future site's in the air, so I understand why he didn't stay in because he doesn't want to eat that. Uh, the crit's a little tough, but he's gonna lose his Cloud to Psy Shock, but. He just needed to chip it a little so that any other move could kill this. Um, we are draining Kiss, which might be bad. Uh, well, Isaac Crash still killed. I didn't know if he was going to heal into the range that he might live and then flinch. So simple for the back's caliber. Um, and then we just Ice Shard to secure that. And then this Torco comes out, but we just click Glaive Rush and then... Oh, uh, well, I don't know if Torgo could have killed, but, you know, that's, you know, at least chip, you know what I'm saying? But this guy, this Darm comes in at 33%. It, it's slower, and also if it does, if it were to live somehow, it would uh, take recoil and life orb and probably die. But, uh, yeah, that's the end of the games. And then we're going to go in here and see standing. So at the top, we've got Mort and... Uh, Psycho, Marcus, Roy, the usual suspects, really top three. Mort's performing right now. Love to see it. Ryan, you know, middle of the packs, whatever. Ice, Leo, all whatever. Uh, we watch. This is the relegation watch we got down here. Um, Iceman is 0 02 minus three. Leo's 1 1, but minus four keeps him in the running. Wombles is 0 02 minus five. Kyle's 02 minus 6 and Day is 02 minus 10. So at the moment, if the season were to end, Kyle and Day would be sitting out next season um, for me and someone else to come back in. Uh, it's a new system that they're trying out just to try and make people like, you know, actually have something to compete for instead of just playing for nothing. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say those guys got to either look at changes or try to really watch back their game and try to think of try to think of their plays or what's going on like more in the situation um because this diff it's not impossible to overcome but if you're already at minus 10 you want you know you want to win and then if you're only getting you know two plus two plus three wins it's going to take you four weeks to get back to zero so kyle it'll, it'll take him three for like the same same kind of you know change just to get back to even like net positive so definitely um losing is not necessarily bad but losing like heavy is is the gonna probably be the killer uh this season but we will see how it goes that's the end of this and i will catch you guys for the mpl catch up week three